Hello and welcome to another episode of the Smarter Tech Podcast. My name is Nick, the EMF guy. You know, I'm an advocate for safe technologies and the author of the non tinfoil guide to EMS and the electro pollution fix course. Today, I want to do things a little bit differently. It will be a set of um, of thoughts, of discussion, and discussion I'm having with myself and you, my community, about what happened in 2021 and what it means uh, to my work, to our lives, and collectively to where we want to go um, as far as humanity goes. So it's, I guess it's a pretty, pretty large topic, but I've titled this My Biggest Lessons of 2021. Uh, I wanted to, I think that with everything that happened in 2020, did not really get better, kind of got worse in 2021 when it comes to polarization and the uh, near animosity that I see online about certain issues, whether it's COVID or other things that might be um, uh, political issues or political stances, uh, right versus left kind of thing. I don't think it, it has gotten any better, uh, quite the opposite, uh, if you want uh, my vision of the world. So I don't know what's yours, please tell me, but uh, I don't think things have improved much. So I want to share some ideas about uh, how I think we can move forward and, and how we can... Uh, we can better humanity as a result and try to gain our minds back because it looks like everyone has a version of going crazy in the last few months. So I'm trying to contribute to the discussion and see um, how we could fix that and, and stop being so uh, damn riled up about things. So the first lesson is to me that more than ever, we need community and people around us who are on the same page. So of course, you don't want to surround yourself with only people who think like you because it's a, it's a surefire way to kind of get lost in, in your thoughts and, and stop having feedback about where you might have blind spots. And this is uh, something I've realized when I spent way too much time on Twitter in 2020 that um, in the end, you follow the people who think like you and they follow you back. And then um, there's a word for it. I'm just uh, I'm just uh, kind of bl blink, uh, blanking on it at the moment or blinking. Is it blinking or blanking? You know, I, I haven't gotten that <laughs> part of my vocabulary improved in 2021 yet. But um, there's a term for it where people have these small close knitted communities, which is good in a sense, because you are with people who think like you, but uh, sometimes and oftentimes it becomes uh, for people like me who have a following, it becomes a way to uh, kind of pat myself on the back. So I say, oh yes, EMFs are bad. And then everyone responds, yes, Nick, you're so great. And that's true, EMFs are bad. But I don't have people of the opposite viewpoint to say, well, I don't, um, I don't agree with what you've shared, and here's how um, you could see it um, in another way. So that's one way that um, that it could, um, let's say, be negative to have uh, people in the same community who think alike. But there's also great ways, uh, especially communities that are in person, in just in, in your vicinity, like talk to your neighbors kind of thing. But more than ever, we need that because we've lost touch with human connection. A lot of people have. And I think that loneliness is a very big issue. I've also seen that, um, unfortunately, there's, there's massive corporate overreach and the media... Uh, let's say what we could quite simplistically call mainstream media is uh, being influenced by large corporations, which is not something new. However, now there are certain topics uh, more than ever that are being censored. So it means that certain people uh, like Dr. Mercola, who's been a pioneer on vitamin D on so many issues, they're just... Well, they've disappeared from Google and disappeared from uh, all media except when it's a smearing campaign. So it means that um, we need to help each other. We need to help each other. People who think, you know, uh, we don't partake in censorship 
we don't endorse it. We don't think it's good uh, to censor information, especially not um, opinion. Um, censoring opinion just doesn't make sense to me. We should uh, be allowed to share opinions as long as they're not uh, like like uh, downright hate speech against certain people. And that's that's not what Mercola is doing and um, Sergi from Green Med Info and other people. But when you've got scientists that are being completely shunned by the media and removed from uh, platforms such as Twitter and YouTube and um, uh, kind of scrubbed off Google, this is just not right. So when it comes to my work specifically, a lesson that I've taken in 2021 is, you know what, I need more than ever to develop partnerships with different people. I've connected with many very interesting people around the world, like Julian Gresser and uh, Ben Levy, who works with him from uh, BBILN, that's uh, the broadband, uh, the uh, broad, oh my god, that's such a <laughs> difficult acronym. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me look it up while, to avoid to the, avoid me uh, screwing it up. That b b b b i l a n dot org. I will get it right in this episode. I promise. The Broadband International Legal Action Network. That's a very cool organization. B b i l a n dot o r g. I'm gonna get it right. I swear. Uh, this organization is uh, attorneys and uh, other professionals from all around the planet who um, who join forces together. Why did they join forces? Well, EMFs and fighting against, for example, the installation of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of satellites around the planet, uh, and um, let's say putting a halt to these projects because it's a bad idea for the environment, it's a bad idea for uh, for astronomy, it's a bad idea on an EMF standpoint, and it's barely studied what it's going to do to the ionosphere and also people who happen to live on planet Earth, go figure. So if you want to stop those, well, you can, uh, you can form a community around the world. And this is why... I, I think the internet has the opportunity to be um, to be an incredible force for change. At the same time, it can be an incredible force for I don't know depression. <laughs> it can be all bad news. It can be polarization. It can be so many things wrong, but it can be so many things right. So my goal in 2022 and moving forward is to do even more partnerships like the incredible partnerships I've done with Brian Hoyer in our course, Electropollution Fix. Um, I've done an incredible partnership with a company called 360 Summits and George Shepard and his team have been uh, delightful uh, to uh, as, as partners to launch the EMF Hazard Summit. If you're listening to this uh, when it comes out, it will be uh, relaunched uh, this year in March. So I'm very excited because we, I put together what I consider to be a very nice summit, well-rounded with many experts and activists and uh, affiliates of mine, which means other companies that can recommend uh, my courses and uh, and get a cut on the prize. That's one of the ways that I'm able to finance this work, to spend time in front of my computer and actually get like no one pays me at the moment, right? So I need to do these things, have courses, programs. And then if I have people like functional medicine doctors, organizations, activists that recommend my programs, then I can make a living and I can keep doing what I love doing and keep trying to change this bizarre world that we live in. So more than ever, we need community. I think it was a long-winded explanation. I'll, I'll try to be more straightforward for the other lessons. Lesson number two for me is that you should live outside your comfort zone, but just slightly outside. I read a great book um, this year that really inspired me. Uh, it's from uh, David Data. Uh, that's uh, David, D-E-I-T-A. Um, and David, let me find it. Data. It's going to improvise. Sorry, guys. Uh, David Data uh, has many, many books, including Way of the Superior Men. And 
the way of the superior man, the way it sounds sometimes is like, oh, man are superior. It's not that. It's it's a superior version of yourself. It talks about um, what being a man is, the difficulty of being uh, a man with um, masculine uh, propensity, if you will, uh, sexuality, how we relate to other men, how we will re relate to women. And anyway, part of the lessons that I learned from this book is um, sometimes sometimes I've been just very comfortable uh, comfortable in uh, the topics that I decide to tackle in uh, my personal business growth and my personal growth and I decided to do a few things outside my comfort zone. The the book really inspired me to do a little bit more. You know, I can I can be ten percent outside my comfort zone, but when I stay inside, I just over time I kind of stop having a lot of passion you know so it's just just a quick reminder for 2022 for myself to live a little bit on the edge of the comfort zone and sometimes you step just a little bit outside so i'm gonna do a spartan race in ottawa in canada in uh, in just two hour drive west of montreal i'm gonna go to ottawa at the end of may to do a spartan race and that's an obstacle race for uh, 10 kilometers uh about what is it? Eight miles, something like that. Something like that. So it's gonna be difficult because it's not something I'm used to. I'm I'm in pretty good shape, but I'm not a runner per se. So um, this is something that uh, really pushes me outside my comfort zone physically. I want to also increase my projects, increase the scope of my project. Why? Well. It's gonna. Part of it is to bring more revenue, and then I can give more back. I've I've given in the thousands and thousands of dollars in 2021. Uh, some of it is for my personal salary because, of course, I like having a salary. Everyone loves to make a living for themselves for their family. I have a a modest living still. Uh, if I can get more for myself, well, why not? But also to have a comfortable living, be able to travel whenever I want to, um, be able to um, buy EMF tools and do demonstrations and just have a business that I know has enough money to be able to donate some of it back to important uh, charities. And I'm already giving 5% of the proceedings of most of my projects to nonprofits, but I would like to increase it even further. Um, I was very happy in 2021 when I, I, start, I was able to give more to nonprofits and really saw the potential. If I can grow as a business, what can happen to also my contribution to this world, including uh, how many people I reach? Because if I reach 100, 200, a million people through my newsletter in the future, I hope I can reach that growth. Uh, yes, I'll have more revenue, I'll be able to donate more, but by default, I'll be able, able to reach a million people about that message who themselves can reach to millions more. So it's also, generally speaking, if I can increase my reach, I can or increase my revenue and vice versa. So just increasing the scope of my project, saying, okay, how can I reach 250,000 people and not just 40,000 people like I did the last time around with my summit. And don't get me wrong, 40,000 people is a lot of people, uh, but I just want to ra raise the ante a little bit. Uh, I think that for uh, the relaunch of my summit in March, I want to reach 80,000 people. And then I know that these people, a lot of them, they will experience a transformation in how they think about EMLs. And they will say, you know what, guys, this is serious. We shouldn't have a phone on our heads and we shouldn't just hand a phone to babies and things like that. That's not right. And they will talk in, uh, in return to their community, their families and inspire them to change. Um, I want to improve constantly. And uh, this year, I really want to add an extra 10% to what I think I can do. Uh, because uh, I think in the last two, three years, especially with COVID, I've been, I don't know, I think I've been protecting what I have more than trying to reach for what I want. And um, that's pretty profound just saying it like that. But I, I think it's been, I've been a bit conservative in uh, my personal objectives and, and how I want to step outside my comfort zone. Number three, my third kind of lesson, just like I shared in 2020, you should... <laughs> 
run away from dogmatic thinking in every topic. And this is something I learned from the pandemic. If you have cult-like behavior, like people who say, oh, you know what, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm pro-COVID measure, I wear a hundred masks, you know, and um, this is this extreme thinking that you need to follow the policies and the government is always right and kind of thing. So cult-like behavior is bad. It's, 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 it's never right. It's never the the smartest thing to do. You should, uh, you can decide that you follow all the measures, but at least you have thought about, okay, is this right? Uh, are they right in their assessment of the science? And you, you should still question things. And if you come to different conclusions than I do, that that's fine. But the people who say all the measures are bad, I'm anti-COVID measures and, and uh, or, or I mean, or I'm, I'm, I, all EMFs are bad all the time. And if you ever use a phone, let, let's take the EMF example, because I know the COVID example has been, a lot of people will listen to this conversation and then get riled up about it. So let's say someone who says, oh, um, EMFs are perfectly safe. Well, this is kind of dogmatic thinking because there's so much, so many proof of the opposite. Like the fact that it's a class 2B carcinogen, for example, cannot be denied. It is, and it has been for 11 years now as you listen to this. So cannot really say all EMFs are perfectly safe and that's always going to be uh, a fact, right? So that's an extreme view. So a cult-like behavior is always wrong. So the 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 people who say um, all injections are good or all injections are bad or EMFs are completely good or EMFs are all bad all the time, the, the, this kind of extremist thinking uh, rarely works for anyone. And um, when you think that way, you're you're rarely able to intelligently talk to the other side. Oftentimes, you will just surround yourself with people who are extremists like you, and you're unable to hold two ideas that are conflicting in your mind, which is, I think, the mark of a, of a great mind, someone who can say, hmm, this is interesting, and this might be true, and that is interesting, and this might be true as well, and kind of let it sit, let it let it boil a little bit in the in your mind before taking a decision and taking a side. So more than ever, we need to run away from dogmatic thinking and say, okay, how could this be true? Or what what is this person saying to me? Is this person in fear? Or is, is this person showing me new data that I did not know about? So more than ever, I try to stay away from saying, oh, uh, these people are sheep. These people just follow um, what the government says. Or uh, these people don't understand anything about EMF. They're, uh, they're brainwashed. And like use these words that put people in a corner. So instead, I try to use compassion and say, you know what? They have a different point of view. And if I want to be able to um, have a discourse with them and show them uh, what I see, like, why am I convinced that EMFs are an issue? For example, uh, I need to stay calm and stay connected with them and not disconnect and say, oh, you're stupid. Uh, you don't understand EMFs and uh, you're obviously wrong. So instead, we need to stay connected in the conversation and use a rational discourse, rational discussion and debate to solve issues. And, um, the more the internet is going to become the beast it has become, a polarized, nonsensical place to have discussion, the more it becomes like that and that mainstream media follows, the more we need to do the opposite and, and stop and stop engaging in that extremist thinking and dogmatic thinking. Let me take a sip of water here. Number four, my fourth lesson, nurture your relationships. What will you reflect on at the end of your, of your life? What do you regret? What do you regret not, uh, not having done? Is it, <laughs> I should have worked more? 
or I should have spent more time with my family, right? So one of my mentors, uh, Paul Check, who uh, I just love his podcast, he, he talks about surveys done at the end of life. And most people, I mean, it's it's not a matter of, oh, I wish I, wish I would have spent more time uh, having random online arguments with stranger, right? No one ever says that. So what most people regret is not having spent more time with family, which is made increasingly difficult with lockdowns and travel restrictions and things like that, which is a shame because it's it has never been taken into consideration that people need relationships in person as part of life. Uh, when uh, this has not has been, this is not, this has not been put, I'm, I'm going to get it right. This has not been put in the midst of what criteria are important for society when it comes to COVID measures or anything else. It, it's as if it doesn't exist. But in reality, we all need human connection and we need to spend more time. And just, I spent a lot of time during the holidays with family. I had such a good time and I just cherished these moments, kind of saying to myself, Wow, this is cool. Sharing a meal, just sharing an incredible meal. We, my brother and I, uh, my my uh, bigger brother, uh, we did an incredible Indian feast with like four main plates and a bunch of sides and like really over the top like cooking together. It was incredible. Like these are memories that I'll cherish way more than, oh, I woke up one morning and I read uh, EMF news and uh, I was pissed off about something that happened uh, because more satellites are being rolled out. So in the end, the what I will remember about a year is usually the good times I had with people I love and not initially my work, my work. I appreciate my work. I do my work. It's one of the ways that um, I connect with the with the world and I feel that um, it's it's part of why I'm here to help the betterment of humanity through um, sharing important information that I I I, th I think and discover is uh, underrated or not talked about frequently enough, like EMFs or like certain things about nutrition. I I shared from 2010 to 2016, 17 before I started in the EMF space. So this is part of why I'm here. But mainly, the most important thing about my life is not my work. It's relationships with uh, my wife, with my kid, Elliot, and with uh, colleagues, friends, family members, people I love. So it's really going back to the fundamentals of what makes me connected and happy uh, is just something that works. So that's a big lesson. Just nurture your relationships. If you're, if you're having trouble in your relationship because of COVID, because of uh, different opinions, because of anything else, well, you got to work on that, um, even if there, it's extremely difficult. And I've had issues about COVID-related stuff or different opinions with people that are part of the family has been difficult, so I know what you're going through, but working on fixing these relationships is time well invested in the in the grand scope of things number five invest in your health and you'll be rewarded i spent a lot of time in 2021 to work working on my health personally um, i'm working on straightening my teeth these are plastic retainers if you're looking at the video version um, invisalign kind of thing um, I've been working on it for months, for basically eight months in 2021, and then I still have probably six months to go in 2022, and I'll have straight teeth that are going to stay healthy for the rest of my life. So it's not just an aesthetics thing, it's also a functional thing, and for my long-term uh, dental health that I've been doing that. Uh, I'm still working with my functional medicine doctor, Dr. Tim Jackson. So I'm always working uh, with him to um, test my health. I have a, a urine test, a stool test I'm going to be doing right there. I'm looking at it. Um, I'm going to be doing these every six months. So I'm taking care of my health and I'm investing 
most of my personal savings on health. That's just reality. I try to uh, not have any debt and of course save a lot of a little bit of money. I invested a little bit in crypto, a little bit in uh, maybe I'll I'll buy some other things, maybe some uh, real estate, for example. But also I'm investing massive amounts of my personal money in my health because it that way I'm able to stay more present, more motivated, more energetic, and my mood has been uh, more stable than in the last 10 years combined in 2021. So I can stay motivated. Today I kind of didn't feel recording things, but so it, it, it can happen and uh, since uh, since the holidays, it's been a bit difficult because my energy levels have been low, but I mean, I did have more uh, dessert and, and alcohol and different occasional things than maybe I, I should have. And of course, uh, it's, it's a bit hard kind of catching up on sleep when you have a kid and things like that. But overall, overall, my ability to stay present, stay energetic, do the work, be there for my wife, be there for myself, be there for my kid, be there for my friends is way better than it's been in years. So if you invest in your health to the best of your ability, you will be rewarded. All this hard work that you're putting in, 10 years down the road, it's going to compound. I've been working nonstop at my health since I really hit rock bottom in 2014. And since then, it has only improved. It's been, it's the eighth year that um, I really took charge of my health and decided to change things. And uh, now I see that all the efforts, all all these things I've been trying, all these things I've been doing, the supplements, but also the lifestyle changes, the learning, the different professionals I've had the chance to learn from and work with, it's really paid off. And uh, in 2022, it will stay one of my very top priority to work on my health, discover what my body needs, nurture my body, take breaks, Take uh, take time to meditate. Take time to use my different gadgets like red light therapy or a PEMF therapy that I've been um, playing with, and I'll I'll tell you more about it uh, this year on the podcast. But different tools that I know will improve my health, and actually using them and taking the time to have these health habits built into my day, not just going going going, but taking the time to nurture myself also. And my final lesson is uh, a reminder because it's been something I've been struggling with for years is there will always be people who strongly disagree with you. And <laughs> that's something that um, a little bit older people, especially older men that I look up to, like Jason Prawl, for example, who's a um, filmmaker, health coach, just an incredible guy who... Uh, I, I was talking to him in in uh, in Vermont. I was with uh, my wife Jen also at the time, uh, not my wife at the time, but I was with her at this very moment as we talked uh, in Vermont. And uh, he said, "Well, I I don't know. I don't remember what I said. I said, oh, it's hard to have a lot of people kind of say, oh, Nick, you're not doing things right, and uh, there's there's mistakes in your book, and you're not an expert, and all these things that." Kind of play around with your head. It's it's difficult to try to um, make a name for myself as, let's say, a non-academic guy trying to share a message, doing the best he can. In the end, I've always been, I think, um, realistic enough about my abilities. Sometimes maybe not in the way some of my colleagues would have would have wanted me to position myself. Maybe I claimed uh, to be an expert and they don't like the word expert, for example, and things like that. They don't understand where they're coming from. But in the end, I like I said in my book, I've always tried to say, look, I'm just someone who has discovered a very important topic. I have some ability in life. I mean, I've been writing about health for... 12, 13 years now. So I guess that's something. I have a background in professional copywriting. So I know how to write. I know how to read. I know how to read research. I'm, I've am i become better and better at it. But still, even with all this, 
sometimes I get a bad review and it's just, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, nothing is accurate about his book, what you're doing is bullshit, and all these things. And uh, it still gets to me a little bit, it's still like, ouch, what are you talking about? Uh, I'm doing the best I can. And some people will not accept that I don't have a PhD or engineering degree and I'm still doing this. Some people kind of say, oh, you're an internet marketer and I see that you've been doing, you've been making money online, aha, and I, I, I just debunked you, Nick Pino, and you're making money online. And Yeah, well, <laughs> what do you want me to do? The only person paying myself and and like putting food on the table is myself. So either I get a job and I'm unable to do this work except one, two hours at night and I'm completely exhausted about it. This is a, a kind of side hustle or I'm able to sell something online and somehow make a living and do this full time. So anyway, I never understood that. But just to tell you, there's always critics. And just to tell myself there's always critics because it's... It, there will always be bad reviews. There will always be people who are academics and who feel that non-academics should not partake in this um, information and share information. There will always be activists who feel like I'm taking their place or uh, misrepresenting something. There will always be people who don't agree with one of my recommendations and can cherry pick sometime, something I've said in the past. There will always be detractors. So it is good, I have to remind myself, it is good to list, to read the bad reviews or the negative feedback if they are constructive. If it's just, oh, you suck, well, okay, you know what, uh, this is not a, we're, we're, we're not in primary school and we're not six years old, so I won't even engage with that kind of childhood, childish behavior. But if it is feedback that, it clearly has been constructed well, well, I need to take it in and not kind of say, oh, no, this is just someone who doesn't understand, blah, blah, blah. No, I have to be humble about my ability and try to improve what I can improve. And if I had to change things, there are many things I would have changed about my book, about how I represent science and, and many other things. So I could, I could do entire videos about things that are wrong about my book, but the entire message I'm still very happy with. That's why I'm still selling it. Uh, but when I read bad reviews and uh, or I have arguments online and things like that, um, I'm going to use a phrase from now on that uh, uh, my mentor, uh, Paul Check shared. Um, I, I don't remember who uh, he quoted himself um, in, in this podcast episode that I listened to, but he said this, whenever you, you're wondering what to do, how to respond to someone who's throwing a lot of negativity at you, uh, just ask yourself, what would love do now? And when I say that, I'm like, oh, well... If I were pure love, I would not engage in an argument. I would use, I would try to understand where the other person is coming from. I would see the the bitterness of that person who maybe feels like I'm threatening his um, uh, professional identity by being a non-professional and doing this uh, line of work. I will see uh, the jealousy that I've I've sensed. Uh, I sensed in uh, other activists uh, in, throughout the years in the sense that why why is this guy the EMF guy? Uh, why does he have uh, a following of, uh, uh, of tens of thousands of people when I don't? And I've been putting this hard work for 20 years. And I don't have a good answer for them. I'm, I'm doing the best I can to spread the message. Um, I have um, certain skill sets and, and, and strategies to network and to build. Like, I don't, I don't know. I'm doing my best and something is working. So I'm able to reach to more people. So in the end, what would love do now? I would not be um, judgmental. I would not attack the other person. I would try to understand where are they coming from and, and use love and compassion and not engage online in arguments and things like that. So in the end, um, 
it just me <laughs> makes me feel a little bit calmer when I can respond that way with uh, compassion and understanding and not with this attack and wanting to bite back, you know? So I always feel better when I'm able to calm down and, and, and think to myself, what would love do now? And it's always, I always kind of, uh, I feel myself melting and say, okay, this is, this is kind of silly. Why would I respond with, uh, with a lot of anger? It's just going to put me in a bad state for the rest of my afternoon. So in the end, this is a message that I want to live by more and more this year and disengage from these situations where I am I feel very angry about uh, certain people that are trying to, um, I don't know, that are trying to attack my work or who does don't feel like I'm doing a good job or that I should do this at all. Um, some people told me I should stop. Some people told me um, what you're doing is dangerous misinformation and everything you've done, your book, everything you've done is wrong. Uh, and it it hurts. It's, it's difficult to take in. But um, there's no use to respond, to bite back with anger and kind of escalate the anger cycle. Um, you can just say, what would love do now? Well, thanks for sharing that with me. Uh, I don't agree. I don't agree. I, I, I think that uh, it is more critical than ever to share this, this information and I'm doing the best I can. Um, and if they're not respectful, you can completely disengage. They're going to stay alone and bitter and probably realize how silly they, they were to have these arguments online in the first place. So trying to take the high road and, and doing my best to calm myself down, use compassion is something that I, I'll, I'll try to focus on this year. So I hope you liked it. I know it's a kind of, I'm, I'm rambling about different things, but I hope it helps you see a little bit more uh, behind the scenes of how I think about things and um, about a little bit about me personally. I think that I normally share in these podcasts. I hope you like it. If you like it and you're uh, commenting on uh, YouTube, BitChute, or on my website, please comment. Uh, please let me know how you like these episodes. Um, I will be focusing this year on a lot of tutorials. I have video tutorials of me unboxing things, uh, EMF related products. I have a lot of nice interviews with scientists, with inventors in the scope of smarter tech. So it's not a podcast. It's going to be solely about me rambling on for uh, more than uh, 37 minutes now. But I hope you like this more personal touch. If you like it, please feel free to subscribe. Um, go to theemfguy.com slash review to learn how to leave a review for the podcast that would help me reach out more people. So I always appreciate that. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.